My, I'm Tommy Nixon. I'm the CEO of Urban Youth Workers Institute, or maybe the worst acronym ever, UYWI. No one ever <laughs> remembers it, but uh, you can think about Snoop Dogg when he says, ooh, we, that's, uh, that's basically <laughs> our, our acronym. So Urban Youth Workers Institute, um, we are based out of Santa Ana, California. Um, and I was born and raised here in LA, specifically Pasadena. So UYWI, we do leadership development for next generation ethnic urban leaders. Um, and so what that means is we work with anybody who is, um, who is faith-based, specifically Christ-centered, who is going after young people um, with the gospel. And that could look like nonprofits, youth groups, churches, um, you know, social work, you know, incarceration. It, it looks like so many different things, but we help those leaders grow in their health, their capacity and their impact um, to reach young people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of course, I just saw something this morning that talked about a study that was just done about why people are leaving, young people are leaving the church. And there was like two main things. One, they just didn't believe what the religion taught anymore. Um, and, and then the second one was around uh, sexuality and gender, like just straight up, like two, just two really big things that they're like, here's why young, you know, young people are saying they're leaving. I, so I, I think those are some issues. I, I think the core of it though is, is that they realize, and I actually appreciate this next generation calling us out on this. They realize that we actually don't really believe what we say we believe. And, and we don't actually live, live out those teachings. Um, and it shows. And so, and it shows both like in the way that we've constructed the institution of the church here in the United States, it shows how we have, um, and this is as old as time, but sidled up to the um, to political power, and so we it's become an idolatry thing and a syncretism thing, along with like patriotism or, or you know our our love for America or whatever it is. Those things have been convoluted, and and it's easy for young people to just go. You say that you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself, and yet here's your thoughts about. Um, trans people here's your thoughts about the lgbtqia plus community here's your thoughts politically here's your th and so they're they're seeing all that and it's just so like clear that it's not what we say we believe or the other part of the hard part of this is we they are getting a bootleg version of our belief and so they think they know who Jesus is because they watched a reel or a YouTube video that said he didn't exist or whatever it is. When, when, if you just do some of the work, everything that this next generation says that they want, the gospel answers. And yet what young people are, are saying is they're like, oh man, I reject that. And we're going, why? And then they give us all these reasons that really have nothing to do with Jesus. It has everything to do with his followers um, and the way that we couch and and frame uh, the following of Christ or Christianity in this country. And so there, there has to be kind of a revolution of we we need to push back, um, reclaim some of the, the truth and continue to reframe it in a way that this next generation knows, hey, there's a way to, to not only make it through this life, but to thrive. I, I came to Christ as a, as a child, but then really started wrestling with it. Eighth grade, I really became a believer of, of Christ. And I really took it on because someone said, Tommy, you're a leader. I said, okay, great. And then they asked me to lead their Mexico missions trip, which later I realized, I think they might've asked me because my dad lived in Mexico. But anyway, they were like, you're a leader, lead this trip in eighth grade. I led this trip where we're in a sewage pit, like cleaning stuff out, super gross. And I loved it. Felt a deeply, deep, sense of identity and belonging and, and purpose in my life but i was like no i want to be at my time i'd be like i want to be hardcore for jesus like i want to i'm down like let's go and as i i worked through that i realized um through the church that not everybody felt that way about jesus it was just kind of like yeah you know i just kind of go or i kind of and so i 
as that kind of grew, also self righteousness kind of grew in me, and I struggled with stuff too. Like I was, you know, I, I was, I was, I was struggling with with sin. I was struggling with like, okay, trying to not be how I grew up and in the environment that I grew up in. And so when I got, by the time I got into college, I actually went to a Bible college, and um, I went to this church. I was this church down in South County. And it was really hip and it was blowing up and it was a lot of beautiful people and um and it was really cool or whatever and i was doing the youth work there and and i couldn't i could barely worship because i felt like everybody was full of crap around me and i'm like i know all of you guys are all sleeping together and these are like all like you know it was down by the beach it was like <laughs> it was just like it's ridiculous like all these like surfer guys that were like big and i had just i was doing my internship at this church random and um and i was so it, it so bothered me and then the the neighborhood that the church um, offices were in was a low-income immigrant neighborhood and i'm like why aren't we doing things here this place is awesome and and i got to know a lot of the people around there and the church told me hey that's not really in our values and that sent me over the edge where i went get you guys dude i'm out and so came up back up to my city in Fullerton. Um, and I really wrestled with this and my friends and uh, had started this like Bible study called solidarity. And it was about how do we actually live this thing out? And so God fronted me. He was just like, I was like the church, this the church, that. So I was going through what all the young people and people that are in deconstruction. Now I did that like 20, 25 years ago. And so as I was going, like, I, I believe in this because I saw God do miracles but i'm really struggling with the institution of the church and god really lovingly just had a conversation with me through the holy spirit and just goes tommy because i'm like your church da, 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 this and that and and he goes but tommy you are the church you're the church is people it's not you know it's the body of christ it's it's a living human thing and and it's it's really important and this is what i this is how i started this thing i built this vehicle and and so i had to wrestle with that and so i go okay cool why don't i go try to live it out before i tell everybody else how big of a hypocrite they are i took one verse love your neighbor as yourself just trying to keep the bar low right just one verse and i and my friends and i desperately just tried to live that out and eventually god led us to and at first it looked like doing like really awkward nice things for people like like uh, uh we made dinner for all the people at the pottery barn because me and my buddy worked in the back stocking shelves and stuff and so we just we we're like i don't know how do you love people i don't know <laughs> so you know and it's like pasta it was like the only thing we knew how to cook so and or we helped somebody move you know that was having a hard time that we didn't really know and and then we started praying about it and god led us to a low-income neighborhood um you know, predominantly immigrant neighborhood mexican central american uh, first generation and he gave us literally gave us a community center and so we were like okay let's let's do this and we just tried to live out how do you love your neighbor and some of the things that we discovered from that is things like you don't bring jesus he's already there <laughs> you know what i mean like he's already up to something so this kind of colonial like you know um kind of calling us main you know um mind frame like uh, frame of mind or you know I, i'm gonna come we're gonna conquer we're gonna you know we're gonna bring jesus like he's already there so you just join in with what god's already doing uh, we learned that it was we weren't there to save the neighborhood it was god through the neighborhood that was also saving us um i had to deconstruct from certain frameworks and things that i experienced that i was upset about but I had to come continue to go, but but the followers of Christ are not Christ. They're supposed to be. And I had to differentiate that. And then I had to go, okay, do I believe what scripture says? Is it true? And I went through the process. I did the work. I, I studied Buddhism and Hinduism and and other other religions because I was like, maybe that's the answer. But when I came across things like in Buddhism, that's like, hey, pain's not real. I had a heart. I'm like, but I've experienced a lot of pain. My dad left and I've experienced this and poverty and violence and all this stuff like that can't be it. And Jesus was the only one that I found that was like, 
oh, I've gone through everything that you've gone through, Tom. And and I I I am I suffer with you. That's the only God I've ever found like that. And that's that's really the hope that I'm like, oh man, these young people think that this is like, you know, in a lot of our circles, like it's a white man's religion or it's it's oppressive or it's only used, you know, as Marx would say, it's the opium of the people. So it's only religion is only used to control the masses or for political gain or power. I, I see all that and I get it and I've studied all of it and I, I understand the systems. But I would say personally, my experience of it is, man, this thing works. It's real. And we have to change the systems and the institution to match that. And that's what we're trying to do at UIWI. I'm trying to bring a new uh, paradigm of leadership that will change the entire game. Um, we believe leadership. Okay. So on a leadership level, um, leadership for us is helping others become who they were created to be while in the vehicle of whatever it is that you're in. So here at UIWI, I, I run this nonprofit and we do leadership development. But I'm, I care just as much that my team becomes who they were created to be. Um, because if they live it out, then, then our leaders can have an example and a role model like, oh, that's, oh, okay, that's how you understand who I was created to be. How do I use my giftings? How do I heal? How do I get, how do I deal with the trauma? How do I let my ethnic, cultural language, like, how, why is that so important to joining in with what God's doing in the world? Because it absolutely, it absolutely is. The problem I have with the systems, our systems is our systems aren't built for that. Our systems are like, no, Tommy, you're, it's like what we call the great man syndrome. I, I have the vision and you are here to help me reach my vision. And that's just caused crazy damage, right? Instead of like, like uh, exponentially helping your people be who they're created to be. So then we don't hold on to power. And that's what, so power dynamics in this whole thing is a major part, which then plays out and then it devangelizes the church because young people look at it and they're like, yeah. So as we, as you do that, now we have a generation of young people that are lost in their identity. They don't know where they belong. They don't have any purpose. And here you have a whole group of people that are going, hey, I can help you figure this out. And, and I can help you figure this out, not just so I can, uh, so that you can volunteer here or, or help me reach my vision or, you know, build into a framework where it's like, um, you have to be a youth pastor or you have to do it this way. You have to, to go, no, look, the revolution of Jesus and the way he did it was these mustard seeds are all over the place and they grow in all these spaces. So our leadership development is really about how do you actually, um, help these young people find who understand who they are created to be through the lens of script truth and scripture. And, and then that they, they take those things and understand how they join in the kingdom of God, wherever they're at. So we, uh, another thing we teach is we decompartmentalize. So there's a term that a lot of Christians use that I don't use very often. It's, it's called ministry. And I don't use the term ministry because it, it connotates like that there's a beginning and an end to it. So, so like right now, like I'm doing ministry to you, like I'm, Whoever's listening to this, like I'm, I'm getting you with the ministry, right? I'm, I'm get rather than it's a dynamic process. Like I, the whole point here is depth with God. So if I'm joining in with young people, they can teach me if I'm open to it, that I can grow uh, God through them. Even if they're an unbeliever, he can grow me through that. And I want to be open and awake to that. So as I decompartmentalize, then I start to living a healthy life where, Hey, I tell people no all the time because I have five children. I've got to do dishes. That's all kingdom of God. It's the ministry. I've got to, I got to make space with my wife and for my wife. I, I have to uh, clean my house. I have to pay bills. I have to work hard. I have to rest well. I have to like all that stuff is all kingdom because I want to be a role model for the abundant life of Jesus for young people. Why? I want them to know that Jesus works.